Welcome back to The Bidding Perspective. I'm your Wednesday host, Yeka, and this week we are talking about reincarnation. So to tackle such a huge topic like that, um, my general approach would be to look at what kind of things, what ideas are the foundation to that bigger idea of reincarnation. And often we will jump right into that, into the big idea, without really examining some of the underlying assumptions. So I want to talk about what I think the idea of reincarnation is built upon, which is two big ideas, or three I suppose, depending on how you count it, and really examine those as a way to share with you what I think about reincarnation itself. And those are the concept of what is life and death, and what is the thing being reincarnated? What is the individual or the self? So to jump right into that one, um, I think about us, me, life, um, you know, this squash, as patterns. And the patterns that we are, are built from many different pieces. And those pieces change over time but the pattern remains the same, or the pattern also gradually changes over time. Because one could think that, for instance, the me now is a very different pattern than embryonic me was, you know, decades ago, um, but has changed so slowly over time that it's kind of hard to perceive that change um, at, at first, but it continues to change. But the pieces that make up that pattern all change and one way to, to think about it is to think about us as um, mosaics made from little glass beads and you can think that okay so if the mosaic is let's just you know make this up it's a mosaic of blue red and green beads and if you take one blue bead out and you put a different one in the pattern still remains the same pattern. It looks the same. Um, it functions the same, but one of the components has changed. And over time, those little beads can be completely replaced with different beads. And you can make small little changes to that too. Change a blue bead over here for, you know, maybe a, a light lavender. And the overall image remains. But the person uh, or the being is the pattern. And we can think about those little blue beads as many different levels of what that person is. For instance, I am actually made up of trillions of smaller little beings. So what, I, what we call me, so yucca, is actually um, trillions of, of cells. And some of those cells are genetically me. And inside those cells are other little organelles, which are not genetically me. Um, but not only are there cells inside of me that are genetically me, but there's many, many little beings who are genetically unrelated to me, who are part of my microbiota, who make up part of me, and that's make up the ecosystem that is the me. And so that's a level that we can think of as the little glass beads, all of those little individuals. Now, this is something that I don't have any sort of evidence for, but I suspect strongly that those little beings probably have awareness, probably have consciousness, and are not aware of, of me. They're not aware of Yucca, but they're aware of themselves. But together, all of them together, make me who's aware of me. And I would suspect that we on the scale of animals probably function in a very similar way that we are member we're individuals that are members of a larger system that probably has some sort of consciousness or self-awareness and probably that system is a member of another system that is a member of another system so that's what i think about in terms of life oh but i do want to get down to to say that past the point of, of little cells in these glass beads. We could think of the little glass beads as also being elements. 
So it could be the piece of carbon, right? A carbon molecule that gets a chance to be part of the pattern that is me. But that carbon molecule also, once it leaves, let's say again, it's a little blue glass bead, leaves me, so, um, you know, I, I breathe it out, or it's part of a skin particle, or, or something like that, that then gets to be part of another pattern. And so the patterns that we are are these changing, dancing, dynamic patterns that pieces of them break off and become part of another pattern. And that pattern then grows and changes, and then pieces of that become part of another pattern. And sometimes the patterns themselves um, it's not just pieces that break off, but the entire pattern is broken and transformed, you know, ripples into many other patterns. And that is death. So there's many little deaths. The little death of um, some of my hair or dead skin cells or um, any of that. The, the death of the little of the cells. Right? Because this, they, the cells are reproducing themselves and are not the same individual cells as they were 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. They are different cells now. And so there has been many, many deaths and those deaths have um, flown into new life. And so the many deaths that I am flow into the lives of others and the lives of other patterns flow into the pattern that is me for life. So I think of the pattern as and these are these overlapping patterns bumping into each other. Sometimes it's hard to tell when one begins and another ends. Um, where is me and where is another? For instance, thinking about um, mitochondria, an individual mitochondria inside um, one of my, I don't know, um, one of my the cells in my eyes, right? Is that its own person? If that's its own pattern? But when is it me and when is it not? So I think that that kind of fuzzy distinction is also um, works on the scale of, of us with the earth. And that we are just the earth forming itself into different patterns that have a brief moment of self-awareness and then return back into the greater rippling pattern of the earth itself. Or perhaps we could say not just the earth, right? Because the earth is part of larger um, systems as well. So earth, part of the soul system or part of the Milky Way or, you know, to the local cluster, keep going, right? Um, so I don't think about there being a permanent thing like a, like a soul that is that is outside of the physical. I think the physical is all sort of bumping in there together and that the physical is just the way we experience it, that there isn't really a, a distinction between the, the energetic or the spiritual and the physical. It's all, um, it's all part of the same thing. It just depends on what, how we're looking at it. Um, so that there isn't a soul, a soul or a, a me beyond this pattern. And this pattern is different than it was before. I'm not, our way of looking at it kind of makes it hard to see that, um, but I'm not, oh wow, there's a beautiful hummingbird moth. Let's see if, um, it makes it hard to see that. So, I'm sorry, they just made me completely lose my train of thought. They're just beautiful. Um, so going, I think I was talking about the soul. So the soul in terms of, of not really being this immortal thing that can be passed from one physical um, vessel to another. Um, so that is, that self and, and um, life and death. So the reincarnation, I don't think that there's an ob a soul or an object that goes from one body to another, but, but the objects of the elements, um, the pieces of the pattern that get broken and, and passed on to something else, I suppose that could be seen as a form of reincarnation. Um, but for me, it's just all part of the, the dance of the pattern. Um, and there were a couple other more specific questions in there about, um, you know, simultaneous lives and past lives and all of that. 
um, which I'm not going to get too much into because, you know, as I've just explained, the framework that I work with doesn't really lend itself to that. But in terms of, this is a little bit of a, this wasn't asked about directly, um, but often comes up when we talk about reincarnation and past lives and things like that, that some people have memories or experiences. Um, and that's not something that I would write off and say, oh, they can't possibly be um, experiencing that. I think that the world is, um, that we are only beginning to learn about how the world works. And I wouldn't necessarily know whether that person's, the memories and experiences that they, that they have, whether that means that literally they were somebody else, or if there's some other way that they are being connected to those experiences, I don't know. Um, I think it's a fascinating topic, um, and I wouldn't just write off somebody's experience just because it doesn't quite fit with the picture that I use to understand the universe, or, or so I suppose that the picture that I have does not necessarily exclude the possibility that somebody might be able to tap into a memory like that. So um, the sun is coming up, I've got to get this loaded for you folks, and we'll be back next week. Until then, take care.